Welcome to Hope Fellowship. I'm so glad that you are joining us this Sunday morning. If it's your first time here, first of all, welcome. We're so glad that you're here today. There could be a million other things to do and you chose to be here with us and that's a big deal. So we're so glad you're here. My name's Mary Solis. I'm the online campus pastor here at Hope Fellowship. We're one church, many locations. One of them being wherever you're watching from right this second. You are campus. You're a part of our online community and we're so glad that you're here. Let me give you an idea of what service is going to look like today, especially if it's your first time. We're going to kick it off with worship. This is when we get to sing out songs to God and about Him. Don't miss this moment. I think it can be so easy just to watch, but really engage with this moment. This is our opportunity just to recenter ourselves, focus our attention on God so we get to sing out songs to God and about Him. It's going to be a great time of worship. And then we're going to continue that by having a message from our lead pastor, John McKenzie. Um, last week, we kicked off a series called When the World Breaks. And When the World Breaks is all about the times in our lives where our world is just falling apart. What do we do when we face trial, circumstances that are not what we planned? How do we navigate that in a healthy way? And so we're gonna be talking about that today. I'm really excited for you guys to hear that message. Then we're gonna come along uh, on the back end, stick around at the end of service. I'll come back up here. And we just wanna give you some next steps. We really wanna connect with you first of all, but we also wanna help you take a step closer to the center of God's purpose for your life. Maybe that is saying yes to Jesus. We want to come and resource you. Maybe it's just getting connected here at Hope. Um, either way, we want to come alongside and help you do that. And that's our hope and our mission and our prayer for you this morning. It's going to be such a good day. I'm excited to worship with you guys. Hey, if, it, if you haven't yet, jump in the chat. Let us know you're here. Say hello. We've got hosts and people ready to connect with you. Um, you are not alone. You are not alone. You are a part of a bigger family, a bigger community. Let's pray before we jump into service and kick it off. Lord, thank you so much for every single that person that is here right now. God, I thank you that we aren't alone, that we're in this great community, and God, that you are here today to speak to us, to lead us and guide us. God, I pray you open up our hearts and minds, and God, you encourage us by your Holy Spirit. All of this is for you, so God, we pray you're glorified during this time. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. Go ahead and put an amen in the chat. Come on over and let's worship God together today. Holy Spirit, I got 
ever be ashamed of the name of Jesus Christ. So we sing it out to him. Sing, no, I'll never be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. How could I ever walk away from the one who saved my life? Sing, oh, no, I'll never be ashamed. No, I'll never be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Up your song, 
Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs Get up and praise the Lord So come on my soul Oh don't you get shy on me Lift up your song Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs Get up and praise the Lord Come on my soul Oh don't you get shy on me Lift up your song Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs Get up and praise the Lord Praise the Lord Praise the Lord Praise the Lord Praise the All that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. I know it's not much, nothing else fit for a king, except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah. Come on, would you give him praise? You're worthy of our praise. We sing blessed assurance, Jesus, you are mine. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Born of his spirit and washed in his blood, and what he did for me on Calvary is more than enough. We sing, I trust in you. Oh, I, I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never. Yeah. 
sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust him. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard. here at Hope, we believe that prayer can move the hand of God and can be this catalyst that reshapes our heart and our faith. And with that in mind, I, I, I want to pray today. You see, we believe that uh, Scripture says that we should cast our cares upon the Lord. It's this idea that we should continually bring Him like our needs and our desires and our anxieties and our difficulties in life and trusting that He is going to answer those needs. And so today, here's what I want to do. I want each and every one of you to bow your heads and close your eyes. Now, I know some of you in this room have experienced God move in an incredible way in your life before, like, like this song that we just sang. It's, I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. Like, you, you have that testimony. And I know some of you in this room, maybe that's not you. Maybe you've never brought something to Jesus before, but maybe today can just be that day that for the first time he speaks directly into your life. And so with everyone's head bowed and eyes closed, if you have a need in this room and you, you want God to answer you, would you just lift up your hand nice and high and just hold it up? If you're online, just throw the word prayer in the chat room. And as I pray today, if your hand's up, tell God what you need. Heavenly Father God, we come to you right now. And man, I stand here with uh, my brothers and my sisters and uh, in need, God. Lord, I just ask right now that you see from heaven each and every one of their needs, their desires, their anxieties, their difficulties, and you speak to them directly. God, I ask right now for those who have a financial need, God, that you would make a way where there seems to be no way. God, with those who are seeking a job or who have a spouse or a child that's just lost and gone far from you, God, I just ask that you would bring them back. God, whatever the need is, speak and show them your answer. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And today, church, we're actually going to continue this moment by hopping back into this song. And I want you to sing it with everything inside of you as a prayer of faith that God is going to meet your need. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. That's why. I'm 
in you. We love you today, God, and we say that no matter where we find ourselves, whatever circumstance we're in, that you're right there in the midst of us. Thank you, God, that you hear us and that you act on our behalf. Amen. Wow. How incredible is it that we have a God who created the universe, who created you and I, and he acts on our behalf. That is my prayer. That's who we're celebrating today, but that's my prayer for you that today, wherever you find yourself, if you're before or after an answered prayer, that you're just encouraged and strengthened and know this, know this, that God acts on our behalf and he is for us and he's for you today. Hey, if it's your first time, I'm so glad you're here. My name is Mary Salise, I'm the online campus pastor and I would love to connect with you. We have people that watch online that are all across the globe and so no matter where you are, you're not alone for one, but we want to come alongside you. We want to show you more about who Hope is, but send you a small gift in the mail just to show you our appreciation. So if you'd like to connect today, pull your phone out and text HOPE online to 97000. When you do that, we'll send you a link. Fill it out. Let us know you want to connect to Hope today, and we'll get connected with you this week. And I love sending out those gifts just to show a little bit of love to you guys. Um, we're going to continue our worship through giving, and the reality is that as much as we love to give and as important as giving is, it can be difficult when we don't know if our needs are going to be met. We've got bills to pay, mouths to feed, but God reminds us and encourages us that when we seek his kingdom first, when we trust him with our resources, that he is going to meet our needs. How incredible is that, that that's who our God is. This is what it says in Matthew 6. So don't worry about these things, saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Is that not the anthem today? Seek the kingdom of God above all else. Live righteously. He'll give you everything you need. So if you'd like to give today and, and trust God with your finances and believe that he's going to meet your need, you can text any amount to 84321 or you can head over to Hope fellowship.net slash give and give that way today. Let's pray and then we'll jump into service. Lord, thank you so much for every person that's giving today. God, I pray you meet their need, whatever type of need they have, God. And I pray that today as we hear your message and you speak to us, that we are just encouraged and strengthened by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Welcome to Hope, y'all. Hey there, 
there. Before we continue with this week's message, here are a few quick announcements. Hey Hope, if you or someone you know is looking for a Spanish speaking church in the area, I wanna make sure you know about Pastor Luis and Conexion Church, which meets at our McKinney campus on Sunday afternoons. Not only do we believe and love in uh, Pastor Luis, but we believe in Conexion's vision and mission to provide a vibrant community of Jesus followers for our Spanish speaking friends in and around McKinney. Pastor Luis, I want you to just take a, a second, introduce yourself, and tell us about Conexion Church. Thank you, John, for that great introduction. I'm privileged to be the lead pastor at Conexion Church, where our passion is living by Jesus' example, uh, and we serve genuinely. We gather every Sunday at 2.30 p.m. at the Hope McKinney campus in a space where everyone feels at home. Our mission is as simple as it is profound to love God and our neighbor, to delve into the truths of the scriptures, and to disciple one another so we all grow stronger in our faith. We're committed to sharing our message of hope and salvation, aiming to transform lives and communities through the power of the gospel. At Conexion Church, you'll find a place to grow spiritually, serve others, and live out your faith in a community setting. If you know someone who would benefit from being part of this movement, please invite them to join us and experience the love and hope found in Christ. I love it. I love it, man. And, and if you, uh, you know, you have some Spanish speaking friends and neighbors, I want you to tell them about Conexion Church, or maybe you're at Hope and you are a Spanish speaker, you come from that background and, and you might want to be a part of what they're doing as, as a leader or as a volunteer. I want you to make sure you go to the website, conexionchurchtx.org and you will get all the information you need. Man, I am so excited about what God's gonna do. Thanks, and God. And we wanna be a part of that. God bless you guys. God bless you. Here at Hope, we wanna come alongside parents and guardians to support and nurture your children's spiritual growth and relationship with Christ. We have multiple resources available to help you connect to Hope Kids. You can follow Hope Kids on Instagram and Facebook, access weekend resources in the Hope app, and visit hopefellowship.net slash HK resources to check out devotionals, helpful videos, and conversation starters. Stop by the Info Center after service to grab a physical copy of our Hope Kids Four Ways to Connect card. One of the ways we are actively pursuing unity at Hope Fellowship is through having intentional conversations that builds relationships and understanding. Adults and students ages 15 and up are invited to join us at our upcoming Cookies and Conversations Unity event, where we will focus on the topic of how to love our enemies as we engage in a guided conversation about race, inclusion, Jesus, and the church. This event is happening on Sunday, April 28th at 3 p.m. at the Prosper Campus. To learn more and register to let us know you're coming, visit hopefellowship.net slash unity. To learn more about what we have coming up at Hope, visit hopefellowship.net slash events or download our Hope Fellowship app. Have a great week. Welcome uh, all of our campuses, all of you watching online, all of you here today. Um, a couple things this Friday, family workshop with Gobi, Toby, the Gobi. Um, uh, you can sign up here, hopefulness.net slash events. It's this Friday, 7 to 9 p.m. right here. High school students, elementary students on down, and parents, we have things for everybody. Man, I just, I, I, I can't stress enough the, 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 uh, our generation that suffers or, or is challenged, perhaps with anxiety, uh, stress, depression, whatever, this is a way to help navigate some of those things. And so make sure you sign up for this. And then also our cookies and conversation happening <clears throat> Sunday afternoon, April 28th at the Prosper campus. Uh, you know, uh, uh, if I get asked about the unity uh, table, what is this about? Uh, really, it's about relationships. When you, when you sit across the table or when you build a relationship, a friendship with somebody who doesn't come from your background, who doesn't uh, look like you, perhaps, 
it, man, I'm telling you what, it changes your perspective, it changes your love, and, and, and it helps bring unity rather than division. And so that's what this is all about. Um, April 28th, 3 o'clock at the Prosper campus. Um, today, week two of when the world uh, falls apart or when the world breaks, um, many of us have experienced things in our lives and um, last week we talked uh, with Mike Martin, our campus pastor at Prosper. Shout out to you guys over there. I love you guys. Love you, Mike. Thanks for, thanks for being with us. Um, you know, when, when, you, when you, we talk about going or walking through things, uh, when your world falls apart, uh, a lot of things going on in our world right now as we speak, Israel and that whole thing is such a mess, and we pray that God's peace and protection and will be done. Um, but it, we all have things going on in our lives, things that perhaps we would describe as it feels like my world is falling apart. Last week, we just talked about that Jesus was all about spending time with people who were hurting. Um, he spent time with people that were um, in pain. He spent time with people who were uh, challenged. And, and so I, I just, I want you to know today as we go into um, Job, the story of Job, it's an Old Testament character in, in the Bible. It's a very difficult story. It's a very challenging story. And I want to start off by saying that uh, I don't have it all together. Uh, so what, I, what I'm talking to you about today is something that I'm learning with you as well. Uh, every message I teach is for me first, and then hopefully you get something out of it. But the reality of today is I know that some of us are really challenged today. And we may be walking through marriage difficulty or financial difficulty or uh, family difficulty or emotional, mental difficulty. There's all kinds of things, all kinds of ways in which our worlds fall apart. And I want you to open your heart today uh, to a hard story, but a good one. Uh, I, I believe, uh, well, I know Scripture uh, is powerful, and it, sh and it shapes us, and it, and it corrects us, and it helps us. So today, as we talk about uh, the, the story of Job, this is a story of someone's world falling apart, to say the least. I don't want to, I'm not going to uh, give you a rundown. I want to go to the scripture, Job chapter one, and let's just pick up uh, about what happened in the life of Job. One day, the members of the heavenly court came to present themselves before the Lord and the accuser Satan came with them. Now that's an interesting thing. And I get asked this, why, why did he come? I have no idea. I don't know why he's able to do this, but he did. All right. Satan come with, how's that for a theological answer? Okay. <laughs> stay, stay tuned. There's more to come. Uh, where have you come from? The Lord asked Satan. Satan answered the Lord, I have been patrolling the earth, watching everything that's going on. Then the Lord asked Satan, have you noticed my servant Job? You notice how the Lord just threw him right under the bus. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, leave me alone. Leave my name out of it, right? But no, have you noticed my servant Job? He is the finest man in all the earth. He is blameless, a man of complete integrity. He fears God and stays away from evil. Satan replied to the Lord, yes, but Job has good reason to fear God. You have always put a wall of protection around him in his home and his property. You have made him prosper in everything he does. Look how rich he is. But reach out and take away everything he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. All right, you may test him, the Lord said to Satan. Do whatever you want with everything he possesses, but don't harm him physically. So Satan left the Lord's presence. It goes on to say, that uh, the enemy comes back before the Lord and says, hey, I want to I touch him physically. I, I'm not going to kill him, but I'm going to put sickness on him. And so uh, the, the story goes that Job lost everything. He and his wife lost everything. They lost all their kids. They lost all their livestock. They lost all their homes. They lost everything. Uh, and you can go read if you want the, the whole story. But Job finds himself in a position of his world falling apart one day, in one day. It wasn't like over a series of a year or a month. In one day, he lost everything, and he's left holding the pieces of his life, and then sickness boils all over his body, and, and it was a painful time. It was a challenging time. So, again, when we look at characters of the Bible, I, I want to be careful to, to help us understand that we're not trying to be like Job. 
We're actually trying to be like Jesus. Um, but we do learn things from the good and bad from people in the, in the Scriptures. And I love that the Scriptures are filled with people who are imperfect. I love that the Scriptures are filled with people who, sin, who sinned, who fell short, who, you know, did not do the right thing. Some of them did the right thing, but he puts it all in there so that we can learn. That's what the Scriptures are for. The Old Testament, those stories are for so that we can learn, we can look back. And so as we look at the life of Job, what do we learn? And, and I'm, again, I want to just preface this that, to say that, listen, I know what I'm getting ready to say is, is difficult and it's challenging, but I do believe it's right. I do believe it's Scripture, and, and that's what changes our lives. And so wherever you find yourself today, uh, you, we're not going to compare ourselves with Mike Martin. We're not going to compare ourselves with Job. But where are you today? Not what if this would happen to you. Okay, so we're not playing the what-if game. I'm talking about your life presently, your life currently right now. What's happened and where you are right now. You've had a good season, and some of us have very challenging seasons, and it comes and goes. And, and I want you to understand, like right now in your world, that may be falling apart, and if it's not, um, what would you do if your world fell apart? I think there's some things that we can learn from Job. And, and the first one is this. Depth of relationship equals depth of endurance. Amen. Now, the, what I mean by this is that Job's relationship with God wasn't in a state of neglect, wandering, or disobedience. Job wasn't in his own world doing his own thing, getting caught up in the world and the riches of this world and everything that it can afford. And because he was wealthy, the scripture says he was wealthy. Job did not fall into that trap. Job wasn't in a cultural, religious relationship with God. Job was in a close, personal relationship with God. Job 1.1 says it this way. There was once a man named Job who lived in the land of Uz. He was blameless, a man of complete integrity. He feared God and stayed away from evil. His, his whole purpose in life, Job, his whole purpose in life was to please the Lord. Verse 4 and 5, the Lord says this. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, Job would do this for his sons. The sons would take turns preparing feasts in their homes, and they would also invite their three sisters to celebrate with them so all the family gets together. When these celebrations ended, sometimes after several days, Job would purify his children. In other words, he would get up early in the morning and offer a burnt offering for each of them so, because Job said, perhaps my children have sinned and have cursed God in their hearts. This was Job's regular practice. So again, Job was not just, you know, in a religious relationship with God. It was real. In verse 8, the Lord asked Satan, have you considered my servant Job? So even the Lord looks at Job as the finest man in all the earth. He's blameless. How many times have we ever heard the Lord say that about somebody? He was blameless, a man of complete integrity. He fears God and stays away from evil. The point, the point is that Job's relationship with God was deep. His, his relationship with God was so, was so real and it was so personal to him. In, in his family, perhaps they said, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make, a, and this, again, Old Testament, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a sacrifice and, and, and lift it to the Lord in case they've done something wrong because I just want to please the Lord and I want my family to please the Lord and I'm not going to do anything that would ever jeopardize my relationship with the Lord. The scripture goes on, I won't even go there, but it goes on to say that, that Job says, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This is the kind of relationship. He, sta he is standing there, maybe sitting, and nothing is left of his home. Nothing is left of his family but he and his wife. And even his wife is saying and getting to the point of saying, hey, Job, hey, listen, you know what? Curse God and die. This is crazy. You've got to be careful for those wives. But no, I'm kidding. Oh, you know I'm just kidding. <laughs> there was a real relationship. And, 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 and when she says that, or, or, or when his friends come around, and they're going to come around in, in a minute in, in the story, Job doesn't do that. He said, blessed, is, uh, blessed be the name of the Lord. 
My Redeemer lives. That's so our depth with the Lord equates to our depth in endurance. When we face our world falling apart, what is your go-to? What is your first thing? And a lot of us, it's why me, why God? And those are, I'm going to get to that in a minute. But many times it's not, hey, the Lord gives, the Lord takes away. I don't understand, but blessed be the name of the Lord because I, I, I'm going to trust God. His depth was the reason, we're going to go to the end of the story at the end, but his depth was the reason why he made it to the end. His depth with his relationship with God was, was the reason why he didn't curse God and just say, you know what, forget it. His depth with God was the reason why he didn't lose his faith, get disillusioned, and walk away from God. Because his depth equated to his endurance. And it's the same way with us. If our, if our relationship with God, listen, is cultural in nature, in other words, we're Americans, this is what we do. I was raised, my grandfather, my, 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 my parents raised me in church. I come to church once or twice a month. This is what I do. I'm going to tell you, I'm not judging you. I, I'm not saying you're not a Christian. I'm just saying that the the your our response when challenging times comes is probably not going to be a good one our response when 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 we are a cultural kind of christian when we are not deep at all we're not reading scripture we're not really praying we're not involved in church we're not serving we're not giving we're not praying we're not really doing anything we're just showing up every once in a while and we we acknowledge the lord but we're not really serve i'm going to tell you that that shallow faith that shallow relationship is going to equate to a shallow endurance and when the going gets tough and when the challenges come, it's going to be really, really hard because you have no anchor. Job's depth of relationship equaled a depth of endurance. Let me put it on the screen like this. The deeper our relationship with God, the less our faith is shaken. It doesn't mean bad things don't happen. It, it doesn't mean that everything goes perfect in our life. It doesn't mean we're going to be rich. It doesn't mean we're going to always be healthy. It, doesn't mean, it just means that, hey, you know what? No matter what happens, I'm going to trust God. My faith is not going to be shaken. Now, that depth, just, uh, just in your mind, scale from 1 to 10, where would you put yourself? Where would we put ourselves on a scale from 1 to 10? 10 being like, man, I'm like Job. No one. Or I'm like Satan, <laughs> you know, what? Where, where am I? Okay, does that make sense what I'm saying? This depth matters. The reason why, look, the reason why we beg you to get into groups, beg you to read your Bible, we're reading the New Testament today, I mean this year, the reason we beg you to, to, to disciple, to get in disciples, to, to use Right Now Media. The, we pay for that so that you can do it for free. The reason we do that is not just so that, well, why would we care except that I want you to be deep in your relationship with God. I want you to be fruitful in your relationship with God. I want you to remain in Him and He remain in you. I want you to grow strong roots so that you know how much He loves you, even in the bad times. How wide, how, how high, how long, how deep. Okay, number two. Number two is questions can either equal bitterness or repentance. And I'm going to explain repentance in a minute. Now I'm going to, I got I to move quickly here. But Job does go to asking questions. He's not God. And he begins over time. So at the beginning, he's like, blessed be the name of the Lord. My Redeemer lives. Hey, I'm not cursing God. Well, chapter 3, <laughs> he starts asking some questions. And I want you to think about your situation and, and how we can relate to what he's going through. Chapter 3, 
Verse 3, let the day of my birth be erased. You ever thought about, don't raise your hands, but you ever thought, I mean, I wish I wasn't born. I mean, some of us have gone through really difficult times, the valley of the shadow of death. And what I mean by that is not just death, I mean abuse in some way growing up, um, painful, painful tragedy. A lot of us have dealt with stuff that is like, oh my gosh, this is, Job says, let the day of my birth be erased in the night I was conceived. Let the day be turned to darkness. Let it, be the, let it be lost even to God on high. And let no light shine on it. Let the darkness and utter gloom claim that day for its own. Let a black cloud overshadow it. And let the darkness terrify it. Let that night be blotted off the, the, the calendar. Never again to be counted among the days of the, year, of the year. Never again to appear among the months. Job... He gets to that point where it becomes, I I don't know, real. And so by no means am I saying that, I've always said this, God's not intimidated by our questions. But I think we're going to learn something in here in, in what I mean by questions can either equal bitterness or repentance. For 35 chapters... Job, with his three friends, and they were friends, but they weren't really good friends, they are dialoguing, and Job is asking questions. Chapter 10, verse 1, here's what Job says, I am disgusted with my life. You ever been there? Let me complain freely. My bitter soul must complain. I will say to God, don't simply condemn me. Tell me the charge. Does that make sense? Job is just like, hey, I sought the Lord, and he heard and he answered. Well, no, he's not answering now. I mean, some of us have a real struggle with that, with that song because we're like, well, I've sought the Lord. He, he didn't answer me. I, I don't know what's going on with my relationship with God, but, but I sought the Lord. And we're singing this, and people are like, oh, yeah. And you're looking around going, no, he ain't heard me. And that's where Job is. That's, that, this is he, he's like, man, I'm disgusted with my life. For 35 chapters, this goes on. His friends come around him. First of all, they spend time to console him. Then they start picking him apart. They start saying, hey, you know, hey, you need to repent for your sin because something is wrong. God is, God is, is judging you. And, you, and Job is like, Sh- I, don't, I'm not, I don't know what I've done. He's, he's even, I've not even lusted after my neighbor's wife. I've not done anything. As far as I know, I am clean before the Lord, which is true. The Lord even said it himself. But the three friends are going, oh, no, you didn't. You are a little whatever, right? You're a sinner, and you need to repent. That's why God's doing this. 35 chapters, this goes on. And then God, finally, finally God, God speaks. Then the Lord answered Job from the whirlwind, who is this that questions my wisdom? So I wish I had the, the voice. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like God is like with an attitude. You know, I just feel like it, it's so much deeper than my weak voice. Who is this that questions my wisdom with such ignorant words? Brace yourself like a man because I have some questions for you. And you must answer them. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you know so much. Who determined its dimensions and stretched out the surveying line? What supports its foundations? And who laid its cornerstone as the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy? God goes on for two chapters. Job took 35. God goes on for two chapters going, who are you to ask me these questions? And Job, has a, a, Job is at a crossroad in his relationship with God because he, he can either choose to say, God, can I just be honest with you? I don't really care about the dimensions of the earth. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't really care that if we're one degree uh, further, uh, closer to the sun that we would all fry. I mean, like one degree, I don't care. Or we one degree the other way, we'd freeze. I don't really care. This is my life. In fact, I'd rather be dead. What I mean by this is questions can either take us down a road of bitterness where we begin to pull back from God and just walk away, walk away slowly because you know what? 
I'm not getting my answers the way I want them. I'm not getting the, the results. I'm not getting healed. I'm not getting whatever. And you know what, God? If you're going to be like this to me, I don't deserve it. I know I'm not perfect, but I don't deserve it. Job, I mean, he certainly didn't deserve it. But Job didn't. Listen to what Job says. Job replied to the Lord, I know that you can do anything and no one can stop you. You asked, who is this that questions my wisdom with such ignorance? It is I. And I was talking about things I knew nothing about. Things far too wonderful for me. You said, listen, and I will speak. I have some questions for you, and you must answer them. I had only heard about you before, but now I have seen you with my own eyes. I take back everything. Okay, so, so, so here's, here's the deciding moment that Job could have powered up. He could have prided up. I don't know if that's a word. Or he could have repented. And Job decides to repent. Now, many of us are, even while I'm, while I'm telling the story, you're like, he did nothing to repent of. I mean, yeah. Job says, with my, uh, I take back everything I said. I sit in dust and ashes to show my repentance. Let me put it on the screen like this. As we ask our questions of God in the midst of our breaking, it's important that we posture ourselves in humility and ultimately in repentance. I'm not saying that we won't ever have questions, and I'm not, so I'm certainly not saying I have, I'm the, probably the biggest baby in the room. When things don't go my way, when traffic is bad, it's like, God, part the Red Sea. Let's go. You know, I've got things to do, and I wish I was kidding. But if I'm going to whine about that, so by, it, by, by, by no means am I saying, that, oh, look at me, I can do all this, and I know all that. I'm just learning with you. And I'm, I'm challenging myself with all these points that, God, I hope, I hope that my relationship is as deep that, that I would not just walk away from you because things don't go my way or because I have calamity or because I have things that go on. God, I pray that my, my depth with you is greater than my questions. And I hope that, that my questions could lead me to where Job was, that I could repent and say, Lord, I'm sorry that I didn't trust you in the beginning. I'm sorry that I didn't just, just shut my mouth and just say, Lord, I started with blessed be the name of the Lord, and I'm going to end with blessed be the name of the Lord. If you want to take me, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I don't have anything to offer anyway, but I trust you no matter what. Questions, listen, and you know this. We all know this. Questions can lead us to bitterness or it can lead us to repentance. It can lead us to deeper relationship with Him. Third, Trusting God equals the plan of God. Okay. First two, three chapters is accuser coming before the Lord. Job's a blameless man. Okay, I'm going to take everything away. Takes everything away. His wife says, curse God and die. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And then from chapters 3 to 38, he's, I mean, all these things... You know, he's asking questions. His, 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 um, his friends are asking questions. They're accusing him. They're, they're trying to get him to admit something, and, and it's all a waste of time. And then the Lord speaks. And then we come to the very end of the book, chapter 42. And this is where, this is where a trust in God equals the plan of God. I am not saying, and I think Scripture is clear that God didn't make this thing happen. In other words, he didn't, he didn't say, I'm judging Job or I'm going to test Job. The enemy, the enemy came against him, and he comes against us. We live in a fallen world. We live in a sinful world, and sin, because of sin, there is death. I don't care who you are. I don't care how much faith you have. You're going to die. Unless the, unless the Lord comes, we are all going to die. So we can either say to the Lord, I'm going to trust you, and then, and then whatever the plan is, that's what I, want, I want to be in the center of your plan. I want to be in the center of your purpose. I want to be in the center of your will. Chapter 42, 
here's the end of the story. When Job prayed for his friends, okay, so the Lord talks to the friends, and he says, friends, you guys were idiots. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. Okay, but I, I really think it's in the Hebrew. You guys are idiots. You guys aren't friends. And he, and he, and he says, hey, whatever Job prays for you, that's what's going to happen. Well, Job prays good. Prays for his friends, and the Lord restored his fortunes. In fact, the Lord gave him twice as much as before. Then all his brothers, sisters, and former friends came and feasted with him in his home, and they consoled him and comforted him because of all the trials the Lord had brought against him. Even then, they didn't understand. It wasn't the Lord doing it. And each of them brought him a gift of money and a gold ring. So the Lord blessed Job in the second half of his life. I want to be, I want to be clear here that even in the blessing and even in the plan of God doesn't change that he lost his kids. Does this make sense? I mean, he still lost his kids. There's still pain. This life is life. This, this world is real. But, but, but when we trust him, we don't always understand, and I don't always have the answers, nor will we, perhaps, in some cases, ever have the answer. And I promise you, I don't think when we get before God, I've said this many times, I've got a few questions for you, Lord. I don't think we're going to care about those questions anymore. When we see Jesus, I don't think we're going to care about our questions. I think we're going to fall on our face, and we're going to thank him for his mercy, and we're going to thank him for his grace. We're not going to, we're not going to approach the throne of God with any kind of pride or any kind of self-righteousness. We are going to approach the throne of God in worship and in honor. Second half of his life was, was more than in the beginning. For now, he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 teams of oxen, 1,000 female donkeys. He also gave Job seven more sons and three more daughters. He named his first, okay, so these, were, these names, okay, whatever. His first daughter was Becky, and then the second was Sarah, and the third was Bobby Jean. In all of the land, no women were as lovely as the, as the daughters of Job, and their father put them in his will Along with their brothers, Job lived 140 years after that, living to see four generations of his children and grandchildren. Then he died, an old man who had lived a long, full life. It could have been a very different story if the depth of relationship with Job was here. It could have been a very different story if the questions overshadowed repentance. It could have been a very different story if he trusted his own plan rather than God's. Does this make sense? This is hard. I know it's hard. It's not easy. But, but as we approach our, our world that may fall apart in some way or another, guys, we can learn from this story and we can learn from the scriptures and it challenges us that no life is perfect. No, 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 God never promised a rose garden. He never promised us a life that is not trial free. But what he did say is, I'll be with you. I'm going to be with you. Trust me. I'm going to give you peace and I'm going to give you what you need each day. Ask for daily bread. And then we come and we just say, God, I don't understand. And I got a lot of questions, but I'm just me. So I'm going to, I'm just going to, I'm just going to kind of skip that part and just say, Lord, I'm going to trust you no matter what. That, only, that can only happen if this happens, the, the depth. That can only happen. If this is not there, you're going to spend a lot of time in the wilderness of questions. We, me, I, me too. But if the depth can, 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 can that, that, that greater is he that is in me, that, that welling up rivers of living water just wells up within us, and, and, and no matter what happens in our lives, no matter what happens, we can say, blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm going to trust you. And maybe you're here today, and that scale of one to ten is a four or a five or a six. There's no magic pill. There, I don't have any ushers at the door with a bucket of pills to say, hey, if you need more faith, just take a pill. It's, it's time in. 
It's time in. Dive into scripture. Dive into prayer. Dive into community. Care more for what God wants than what you want. Care more for what God wants than what this world offers. And that depth will begin. You'll feel, you'll feel that, that growth happen. And then when something happens, it, it's not fun. Okay, so nobody's saying, oh, you're, you're not, you're, it's going to be totally fine because I'm a woman of faith. Okay, it still hurts. There's still pain. There's still challenge. But in the midst of the challenge, I choose to trust him. I choose to trust him. Lord, your word is sharp. It's powerful. And, and, and a lot of us in this room, our worlds are falling apart in some form or fashion. And um, it doesn't feel good. Uh, I know me. I, I know I want everything to always go right. I want it to go the way I want it to. I want to be in favor. I want to be in blessing. And of course, we have that no matter what's going on in our lives. But at the end of the day, if we're real, then it hurts or it's painful. And, it's, and there's question marks and there's all kinds of confusion. But Lord, in the midst of that, may our, may our faith run deep. And may our questions be few. And may our trust be in you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, amen. Uh, wow, such a challenge, truly tra challenging message. You know, every week I kind of say, oh yeah, that was challenging. But this one, I mean, the Job story, it can be a tough one. And one that we really have to wrestle with. But really, when we read this and when we hear this message, I hope that you're challenged to look in the mirror, to ask yourself those hard questions. And the big banner of this message, the big theme running from beginning to the end of this entire service has been trust God, putting our trust in God. I'm reminded of the scripture, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding in all of your ways, all of your ways acknowledge him. He'll make your path straight. It's trusting in God and so today, I wanna give you the opportunity to put your trust in him, but it's hard to trust in someone you don't know. John said over and over again about that depth of relationship. If you don't know this Jesus and you wanna know more about who he is, the life that he lived, we have a resource for you that's available. You can even share this resource with people that you know that maybe wanna know more about who Jesus is. Go to hopefellowship.net slash Jesus. And on that page, we've got information about who Jesus is, but Maybe you want to trust him today. Maybe you've been going through a hard time, difficult seasons, or maybe you've just kind of been doing your own thing, trusting in your own strength, and you want to put your faith and trust and hope in Jesus today. We want to come alongside you as you walk out your faith journey. So pull your phone out, and you're going to text HOPE ONLINE, H-O-P-E, HOPE ONLINE, it's on the screen here, um, to 97000, and then uh, we'll send you that link. Let us know you're crossing the line of faith. And really what that means is you're just taking a step closer to the center of God's purpose for your life, and you want to know more about following Him. We're going to send you some resources. We'll be praying for you this week. So make sure to take that step and join us because we want to come alongside you on your journey to the center of God's purpose for your life. We're so glad that you are here for service today. Um, if you're looking for other ways or just want to know more about Hope Fellowship, go to hopeonline.cc. We're so glad that you're here and we'll see you next weekend. Bye, guys.